just to follow up from that, um, when we came back here to Sweden, you've got a fantastic public transport system compared to what there is in New Zealand. Believe me, you can get from one side of, to the other side of town. Yeah, it's a London Bridge. I mean, really, it can be improved, but really, you know, you've got something that's fantastic here already. Yeah, well, thank you. I mean, that's a, a not executive director of Thamesdown Transport. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, that's an unpaid role, by the way, just in case anyone thinks it. Hey, Peter, if you mentioned the Eastern Development, I'm, I'm keen to buy into what you're saying. I like the idea that we've got to have this mind change in the way we share roads. Lived in Germany for eight years, it was a privilege to do that. Um, and saw cycling in Holland and Germany in the 60s, in fact, at higher levels than, than in this country. What, what interests me is if we look at the 419 as the barrier to pedestrians and cyclists, yep. I'm wondering if we're going to go down the tried, tried tested old commercially led paradigm, which is we'll end up with a bomb site that people are incentivised to get into early because the houses are discounted. The black top is not on the road, so buses and public transport won't go in. The pavements are two inches below the curbstones because diggers will drive across the housing plots so they won't asphalt those. So the only vehicle that you can really use to get in in isolation every four fifth house drive. is a four-wheel drive. <laughs> so, so unless we change the paradigm and we look at how we get over or under or through the 419 and integrate, I mean, when we had the last stakeholder thing, um, I logged in dentists. Unless we put dentist practices, schools and shops there, they're going to need to cross the 419 to get into a dentist. Well, what, what's one what, what of the things that uh, the, the plans will probably be out in the next couple of months, or, you know, the, the concepts will be out. What we're looking at is, um, and uh, I'll be very careful here because we do have an enforcer present, um, we actually want a green bridge. When I say green bridge, I don't mean just you know, a bridge painted. We actually want a corridor across from the, the development not just to cross to the other side, but actually linking into the green loan, as I like to call it, that actually takes you straight to the town centre. Mm -hmm. So you have direct pedestrian cycle, possibly bus, or rapid transit. Straight there. Also badges. And, sorry? Badges across the four one. <laughs> well, uh, they, they need a green they Well, I'm hoping they'll be grass trees, etc. So that, you know, they'll, they'll be able to, uh, yeah, to do that. How to teach the cycle low badges. I tried the other week. But you know, the, the, the thinking behind that is that um, if we're to make significant changes, we have to do something which is very bold and, dare I say, I mean, you know, substantial sums of money. But we need to do it despite the cost. We need to make those changes. Part of what we're doing in the transport planning is also, how do we improve the bus service we have? So, and the routes that we're operating, the most effective in terms of, of uh, how we can move people around Swindon. How can we link all the areas that we know that people want to go really effectively? You know, if you want to go from from West Swindon to North Swindon, what's the easiest way to do it? How can we do the the, uh, the routing? So. Yeah, no, I just want to ask that because I got the impression when I've been to the recent WSP consultation that um, when they're looking at journeys that people make, they seem to be tracking journeys that are made in vehicles, motorised vehicles, so car journeys and bus journeys. I don't get the impression that people are looking at journeys that are made by foot or on bicycle. Uh, no, you're, you're absolutely right. But the reason is because... Um, it's not that we, we need to ignore those because actually you're the ones who are leading the revolution. What we need to do is establish where it is people are coming from and where they're going to. And then what can we provide as a realistic, viable, sustainable alternative to that? Because once the alternatives are available and in place, that's when you can really start influencing people's behaviour. Yeah. Until you've got those in place, there's no point beating the drivers up. I can understand that rationale, but I still feel it's a bit toxic yeah. heavy because just say, hang on, because <coughs> actually if you look at what it's like, some people have no choice but to walk, for example, or to go by back. Um, if you actually look at what it's like to make those journeys that people are making, um, and I know this because I walk and cycle most places, you could then begin to understand what it is that stops people making those journeys and why they're, you know, well, they're getting in their yeah. past to do it because well, they're fairly determined. One of the reasons why I was very keen to work with Mark after he finished shouting at me the first time we met, <laughs> um, 
Not, not literally, but I think... Uh, I took a coalition, there was no shouting, please. <laughs> <laughs> but, but is there uh, a cycle group? Yeah, would yeah. Be that one, one, of the re- one of the reasons why I want to work with... Um, uh, it's a special interest group, but it's not. But it's, it's a community involved. Bicycle in users group. Home to all that's having yeah. different cycling. Is because the users have to inform us. So, you know, I, I've had the issue uh, about signage raised again tonight. It's something that we were talking about when we first met. Yeah. You know, there's some really simple things that, to, if I'm to be perfectly honest, should have been done by now. Mm-hmm. And I'm actually quite disappointed they haven't. And it's something I'm I not to work together, to Peter. Mm-hmm. We, we need to work yeah. together. We've yeah. we, 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 two years to have a base map by Pindar, yeah. which we've gone into the Sheldon Cycling Group, the Cambridge Cycling Group, and your own in house people and done the costing score, and yet transport planning can't. Now, I know there's the public first, but it's crying out to be used that as network it, that you've got. For, 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 for this case, the public first is not an excuse because it's actually registered for it. So, and so, so offline, we'll get it moved then. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to... No, 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 I mean, if, 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 you, if you want to jump in, and, who was first? I think one of these, I think, I think uh, Jerry was actually. Well, Jerry's already spoken. Oh, right. I'll take this <laughs> lead first, <laughs> and then you, then back to Jerry. Um, I noticed that you've not said anything about um, increasing penalties for drivers or, you know, discouraging them, basically. Um, I mean, you know, you talk about how getting on buses is not attractive. Well, you know, make it, you know, you, you, there's got to be a bit of, of stick as well as power. Put a bloody car parking price. You know, um, if... If you do the bold thing that they did in London, people use buses. You know, they don't say, oh, I'm not going to use a bus. They see that as the realistic alternative, and they do it. In Swindon, it's not really. Even just putting down the prices by 10p in London, put ridership up by 6%. You know, just as as bold. Oh, no, no, I mean, in in, in terms of charging for for the buses, yes. I mean, (laughs) everything is a fine balancing act. And... uh, uh, Swindon is actually quite price sensitive to, to uh, bus spare but increases. It's not just about prices, but, though, is it? But, but can I what, just, I want to what do I'm is saying, though, is slightly different. It's not about, she's talking about no. making, not making no. it easier to get around my car. So this is a report from the Conservative Party's own report that said the inconvenience and cost of on street parking. Poor journey times compared with public transport. So that's national transport. Concept, oh, yeah, and the availability of car parking. There is a big difference. That's what they say, that this is what makes a difference in London. Okay, well, whatever, all right, there's a big difference. But this is, this is what this report say. It's saying that if you, because it's very inconvenient to drive around London, and slow, people use public transport. Mm-hmm. Well, you see, I, 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 A, I'm challenged that. Um, not just because, I mean, London is a, it's a metropolitan city. It operates on a completely different level. But actually, for me in Swindon, it is cheaper and faster for me to drive into central London than it is to go by train. Yeah, that's yeah. true. And, and what's, what we need to do before we start beating the motorist up, we need to have the viable alternatives in place. Give them the carrot first, because there's, you know, when you think the majority of people in this country drive cars, I mean, you know, a number of you will be car drivers. When there is the credible alternative, which they do have in London, they have the tube system as hellish as it can be. They have a fantastic bus network, which is far larger than, than uh, I think, probably anything I've ever seen. So they have those alternatives. So actually introducing something like a, a congestion charge in London was not actually that difficult a decision to make. In Swindon, however, it's a completely different ballgame. We have to consider at the moment how we sustain the economy in Swindon. And, you know, the next couple of years I think will be quite telling. Um, we have to look at how we can deliver the credible alternatives, again, you know, very tight budgetary controls. How we can make it more attractive for people to use those credible alternatives. And then, once we have, you know, even better modal shift than we have, we have quite a good modal shift in, in, uh, shift in uh, Swindon anyway. Uh, certainly compared to, to comparable towns of our size. But yes, it could be better. Yes, it would be nice to do these things. But until there's alternatives in place, I personally am not prepared to start beating people up until I can deliver something. Can I just invoke the 